Fred's not feeling very good today. He has a splitting headache because <laughs> we're going to split his head open. <clears throat> so maybe I'll start here. Um, there are three salivary glands and one of them is on the outside of the cheek. This is the parotid gland. More of it is exposed over here. This is the parotid gland. It is a salivary gland. You have three of them. I'm gonna peel his little head off. <clears throat> and I think for this, I'll just hold this up. The other two salivary glands that you have, you have one, can you see me? Come over. Okay. So you have one salivary gland that sits anteriorly, <clears throat> just below the tongue. That is your sublingual, your sublingual salivary gland, sublingual gland. A little bit lower and a little bit more um, posterior, you're going to get the submandibular gland. And all three of those are salivary glands. All right. This entire region here is the nasal cavity. This is the oral cavity here. These three structures here make up the nasal concha. These three are the nasal concha. As you inhale, air is going to go this way. This entire area from here to about here is the pharynx. That entire area is the pharynx. The pharynx has three different regions. The area at the top that is associated with the nose or the nasal cavity, that is your nasopharynx. At the back of the oral cavity, you have this and it is called the oro, O-R-O, -O, oropharynx. And then as I travel down a little bit further, close to where it's going to branch off into the trachea and the esophagus, this area of the pharynx is called the laryngopharynx. From here, food is going to continue and go down uh, the esophagus, okay? If we end up um, maybe laughing while we're eating or something like that and end up accidentally choking or inhaling something, um, what happens is it can also, it's not supposed to, but it, uh, at times it can go this way as well. This is, uh, this is the trachea. Technically we know it's the larynx and the trachea goes further. And this area right here, this is the epiglottis. So when you swallow the epiglottis, it actually gets pushed down to cover the entrance to the trachea on a good day. And that's what we, what we hope this happens. Okay. And your food is going to continue to go down. <clears throat> At this point, it's in the form of what's called a bolus. In order to get at some of his uh, features here, we're going to have to peel him apart. So these are the lungs. The reddish area is the diaphragm. I'm taking off the lungs here. And the esophagus is going to go through the thoracic cavity. It's going to pass through the diaphragm and it's going to enter into the abdominal cavity. In the abdominal cavity, you have these main structures. I'll go through those first before I start peel them off, peeling them off. <laughs> um, this is your liver. The liver sits somewhat on top of your stomach. This is your stomach here. All of this in gray is your large intestine. And all of this um, brownish, dirty stuff <laughs> is small intestine. Okay, so far so good? Mm -hmm. All right, let's 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 strip them a little bit more. I'm going to take off the liver. <clears throat> so here's the liver. There's really not much you need to know about the uh, outside of it. All the good stuff that you need to know is here on the inside of the vulva, or <laughs> of the liver. Okay. So on the inside of the liver, the liver functions to make bile. This area here, this greenish thing down here, that is the gallbladder. 
So the liver is going to make the bile, the gallbladder is going to store it and concentrate that bile. Now, in order for the bile to do work, it has to travel. And there's two different pathways that it travels. The bile that has been stored in the gallbladder is going to travel through the cystic duct, which is here. And you can kind of see, because it looks like a continuation of the gallbladder itself. And eventually it's going to meet up with, um, with another pathway, and it's gonna become the uh, common bile duct. Okay. Bile, as I said before, is also made in the liver, and that bile can bypass the gallbladder altogether, and um, it doesn't need to make that stop. And that bile goes directly from the liver through the hepatic, which is here, okay. goes through the hepatic, um, the hepatic duct, and then it's going to combine here with the cystic duct to form the common bile duct. Okay, not too bad, I hope. <clears throat> All right, let's see what else we got here. Here is my here is my stomach. I'm going to go ahead and take out the stomach. We have another stomach that opens. Let me know if you if you see it anywhere. This one doesn't open, but there's only one structure on the inside that I need to show you. Okay, so it fits like this. So you notice that both of both of the entrances, uh, the entrance and the exit here, kind of stick up. This is um, the point at which the esophagus is going to uh, connect with the stomach. So the food or the um, bolus of food is going to come down the esophagus and then it's going to go through this structure here to enter into the stomach. This is your cardiac sphincter. It's called cardiac because if you think about it, it, it lies pretty closely to your heart. Okay. So when they say that a way to the uh, man's uh, heart is through his stomach, there might be something to that because it's actually a lot closer than people realize. God help me. Okay. So cardiac sphincter, it enters here and the area that's just right around there is called the cardiac area or the cardiac region, region, right? Mm -hmm. Cardiac region. This arch here, just on the side, this is the fundus. The large section here, the bulk of the stomach is the body region. That's the body region. And then as I, as I um, start progressing over towards this way, you'll see kind of a little funnel. Where this starts to kind of funnel in, this becomes the pyloric region. And then the pyloric region is going to end at the pyloric sphincter. So the cardiac sphincter, when it relaxes, it allows food to enter the stomach. Once food is in the stomach, it starts churning. So we want to make sure that as it churns, that we don't end up with acid reflux and have all that stomach acid and food go up the esophagus. Um, that's also why you get heartburn as well. So you wanna make sure that it, it opens to allow food to come in and then it closes and keeps the food down on a good day. Once the food is in here, it's going to mix with enzymes and it's going to mix with hydrochloric acid and stomach acid, and it's going to end up making a paste called chyme. Okay. Once it's ready to move on, it's going to move here and it's going to exit the pyloric sphincter. Now, once it exits the pyloric sphincter, it's going to go to the first section of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. Now the duodenum here, this is part of the duodenum here. I'm gonna temporarily move part of the large intestine here so we can see. So this is the other side of the pyloric valve. So you could say this is the pyloric valve as it enters the duodenum, which would be all of this area and even maybe slightly beyond where you can see here. So all of that area is the duodenum. This would be the pyloric and I would also say if someone's pointing here, you would want to call that the pyloric as well. <clears throat> All right. Once it enters the duodenum, the duodenum is, the, um, is where most of your digestion occurs. 
all that bile that I talked about that's coming from the liver is going to end up here in the duodenum. This area here, this triangular area, this whole thing that I'm pointing to here is the pancreas. This entire thing here is the pancreas. This line right here is the pancreatic duct. Okay. Now what the pancreas does is the pancreas has, a, it makes a bunch of wonderful digestive enzymes and those digestive enzymes are going to be shipped out through the pancreatic duct and they're going to land in the duodenum. So this is why the duodenum is such a hot spot for digestion because this is the bile, the enzymes, all that great stuff is there. All of this area on top would be considered jejunum. The jejunum makes up about half of this entire region. This region on top would be jejunum and then on the side here would be jejunum. Okay. There's no clear separation between the jejunum and the next segment or last segment of the small intestine, which is the ileum. The ileum is around this area here. And the ileum, like I said, is the last section of the small intestine. Okay. So I'm going to now take off the small intestine and there's some lovely squiggles on the back as well. <clears throat> For now, I'm gonna put him back on. Okay. The entire region here that is in gray is the large intestine. From the small intestine, this, um, the chyme is then going to enter into the large intestine through the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve in this particular one, this is part of it. It's actually gonna come just through this structure, the ileocecal valve, okay? This entire area right here that's been peeled away so you can see it, this is the cecum. The cecum is the first area of the large intestine. Right. You have this weird green finger-like thing that's like uh, just hanging down here. This is your appendix. The appendix, the, um, they used to call it a vestigial organ because we believe it had uh, enzymes that were that allowed us to eat uh, cellulose, but now we believe it has more of an immune function. So this is the appendix. So this is the cecum again. And from the cecum, the, um, the food is then going to travel up. Since it's traveling upward, that's why we call this the ascending colon. This is the ascending the colon. From here, it's gonna travel across, which is why we call it the transverse colon. And then it's gonna travel down. So we're gonna call this area the descending colon. Okay, the descending colon. Now there's one more section of colon and it kind of starts from about here, but it's, it's better visualized if I take him apart a little bit more. So I'm gonna take off the transverse colon and now I'm gonna remove this whole area here. <clears throat> the sigmoid colon is actually um, better viewed from behind, but on the front, I would believe if somebody points around here or lower, that would be the sigmoid colon. Okay? But on the back, you can really see where it gets its name from. Okay. Well, I guess if I do it like this too, but when it's sitting in the body, it's kind of hard to tell. But you can see here how it's got the, that nice S shape. Now, this is the sigmoid colon right there. Around here, where it starts to, it, it's, um, it's off at an angle, but it's still straight from here to here. That is your rectum from here to here. It's where the colon basically straightens out and it's not turning anymore. This brown part here is the anal canal. Um, this model, as well as most models, I guess they don't want to put a belt hole on it. I don't know why. God, I can just see this on YouTube now. Um, <laughs> but um, the, the anal sphincter would actually be here or that you could call that the anus. But it would be a, a little, little chunk of muscle there that's um, just there waiting. And I love how they chose brown. <laughs> we, can, we can go ahead and imagine why that was the case. Okay, 
And that's all she wrote. Yeah.